All right, it's another district breakdown. We are moving to our second to last district of the summer. And boy, it, we're getting late, mid into August here. So it's gonna, it's almost time to start playing these games for real. But we're talking 10 6 a We talked about it last week, how Forney has moved up. Longview has moved up. Uh, Forney and North Forney are no longer sharing a stadium. The North Forney's got their own little joint out there. So that's pretty interesting. Talk to me about... With these, these are two quality teams that moved up. Forney went what three, four rounds deep last year. North four, or five rounds deep. Sorry, that's right. They ran into Alito, and then that something happens there. And then Longview, you know how what Longview is. These aren't just little scrub teams that just got overpopulated and, and moved up to six A. These are challengers. So talk to me about who are they going to challenge Brockwell for that district title? You got that, and then you've got North Forney, who gets Marcus Shavers over a, yeah. a, as the head coach. And you know what happens when you have Marcus Shavers as a coach? Everybody wants to play for him with his enthusiasm and yep. charisma. So we are seeing, like we talked about last week, all kinds of transfers and new names and elements. And the thing that really frustrated me at times about Forney last year is I felt they were a quarterback away from being really successful. Uh, and I think they've got their quarterback now. You got Nelson Peterson. And that right. is related to Adrian Peterson as the quarterback over there at Forney. And he is getting all kinds of huge buzz. They're going to have him for a couple of years. I saw that old Miss has offered him. So, I mean, this is not just, you know, a half brother or brother uh, who's just, you know, in name. He is a great player. And so now Forney's got that quarterback. We know they got that running back. We got JV and Osborne. He had 2000 yards last year. One of the running backs of the year, his district last year with Taylor Tatum was like running back university. So you got that coming in. You got uh, Taj Jahil, uh, who who's just been offered by TCU at wide receiver. Their linebacking core is ridiculous with Landry Hopkins and Kelvin Riggins. And their offensive line, they got three guys uh, in Cash Lewis and Jordan Carraway. The 40 Jackrabbits, Ward, are my pick to come up to 6A Ooh. and be your 10-6A district favorite Sorry to our friends at, in Rockwall ISD uh, who have been kind of having this uh, the top spot on lockdown for the last few years. Morning is my pick to win this district award. That's, what do you how, think about that's, that? that's how you jump up to 6A, man. That's how you immediately get respect. Coach Fleener has got to be happy with the way Dixie just jumps right on here and hands him the district title without even playing a game. Right, but, right here. My, my guy Fleer, they just hired Devontae Harris Ward as a cornerback coach. The yeah. Texas A&M star. I mean, this, this this everybody wants to be in 40 ISD right now. And I think when we get a little bit lower on the district, you're going to see that even a little bit more, that it is infectious. 40 ISD in Coffin County is the place to be. I saw an interview where uh, Marcus Shavers was talking about how, I guess, Coffman County, according to some metric, is the fastest growing county in the world or something, or at least in the United States. I'm going to say it's the world board. Uh, and so I mean, people want to go to Kaufman County. You talked about the stadium growth over there. We got two stadiums. I think they could have just stayed with one, but that's just me. <laughs> and now everybody gets their own little play, a little slice of heaven in Forney ISD. It is a fun ISD to watch. And we are four minutes into this thing, Ward. And we haven't even talked about Rockwall ISD, who are like the reigning and defending champions the whole time we've been doing this. Uh, but I got Rockwall as my number two team. You got Landon Locke coming back, uh, you know, a really talented quarterback and, and coming from that lineage. Jackson Stoner and Jameer Wilson are the two running backs that have to kind of step in. Uh, and you got uh, Tristan Gooch, one of my favorite players. They, they always said in, uh, in Rockwall, the Gooch is loose. And he had over 1,200 yards last year. A lot of players, a lot of the recruiting people are kind of uh, are, are uh, focusing in on, on Jack Duckworth as a player to watch. Uh, I got Rockwall as my number two team in this district, which means, again, we're going down this list. And I haven't mentioned Longview. And you yeah. put Longview in this district the last few years. They are pretty much your consensus number one. But Longview Ward, they lost 15 three-year starters. How do you yeah. lose 15 three-year starters? In my math, you only got 22 starters starters in the first place yeah and 15 of them were on your team for three years how do you replace that yeah. uh but maverick Rowe is expected to be the quarterback over in longview you got the washington brothers that you talked about with mason washington and kelvin washington i know i, I saw an interview where coach king was talking about uh his linebacker core being really good with brendan reese and case and brooks but the secondary he, Coach King said for the first time on one of the East Texas interviews, I like to watch East Texas stuff because, you know, that, that's where I right. learned because in East right. Texas, they actually, you know, have good in-depth 20-minute conversations. We don't got time for that in the No, we don't. Stuff. No. 
Yeah, uh, but he was talking about how like, like the first time in 20 years that he's had to replace everybody in the secondary. Uh, so I think Longview in this district where you're going to have so many good uh, quarterbacks slinging it around without an experienced secondary, they're going to struggle. So I think I'm giving Longview the benefit of the doubt, putting them in the number three spot. But I think we could see for the first time in a long time, I'd have to do a trivia question. When was the last time that Longview didn't make the playoffs? It may be 2024, Ward, because I don't have – high confidence on Longview as my number three pick uh, right now, because the more I'm learning about them, the more question marks are forming in my head, especially in 6A in this really talented district. Well, they certainly have earned your benefit of the doubt that you gave them. They certainly earned them with their past stuff. But if you, if they don't make the playoff, two other teams have to, and I'm assuming that's Heath and North Forney. Talk to me about uh, Rodney Webb's Hawks and Marcus Shaver's uh, North Forney Falcons. You know, it, this is a little bit of, you know, conjecture, hearsay kind of a thing. But I heard when uh, Rodney Webb took over uh, this program, one of the things he was excited about was when he took over the freshman class was expected to be really, really good. And, you know, so now those are juniors. So, you know, we haven't really heard of them yet. They haven't been performing on the field. But my people in Rockwell said, we're really excited about it, but who are going to be those players and how are they going to perform? Uh, you know, the proof is going to be in the pudding and the stats aren't quite out on them because they graduated pretty heavy last year. A couple of the players that they do have coming back, we expect the quarterback to be Landon Dutka. Uh, he, he's on, he's a social media uh, stud. He loves to post, uh, you know, his, his workouts on uh, Twitter and, and I can see why he, he looks like a really talented quarterback. Uh, Ashton Bradford is expected to take over at running back, uh, but there's a lot of defensive questions for me but North 40, they've, they've, they, they've had the best of times and the worst of times because they lost their quarterback. Uh, their quarterback we'll talk about next week in Tamarian Crochet is over at Cedar Hill. So they had to figure out who's going to be that quarterback. And we talked about this last year, Ward, and repeatedly on the, uh, on the podcast. Several people from uh, Mesquite Horn have transferred over to, to go to North uh, to go to North Forty, and right now Legend Bay is expected to be the quarterback if if everything clears with the DEC and whatnot. Uh, I think he was over at Frisco Lone Star a couple of years yeah. ago, and now you know Mesquite Horn last year, and now North Forty. So uh, if if he gets approved over there, I think that he's going to be a huge uh, asset to that uh, team. Uh, you got Ryan Gilbert, the really talented cornerback from Mesquite Horn, who has come over to uh, North. Forney, uh, Josiah Turner, who was the district newcomer of the year in 75A, who was at Forney, moved across town to be part of this North Forney team. Uh, Kellen Sanders, Corday Woodward, uh, two very talented running backs with Elijah Turner, who are expected to step in. Maybe uh, one of them might get transitioned over to wide receiver. On paper right now if all of the DEC stuff clears all the UIL stuff clears I think they're better than uh than Rockwell Heath on paper but because I have some of those questions right now I think right now I'm going to tentatively kind of slide them back and and to have a little bit of a wait and see on them. But North Forney has definitely caught my attention this off season uh, of the work they've done in upgrading that team. Let's talk about the other last two teams which I think you probably have at the bottom two there uh Legacy and Royce City. Uh, they got Tykree Kofdorf, uh coming back. Uh, he had 1,200 yards rushing last year. So, I mean, you got that kind of uh, production at your running back coming back. Jace Oliver, their quarterback, is coming back. Uh, Brendan Anderson, kind of a fullback uh, compliment. Roy City likes to pound the ball. And they got uh, they got the Rockwall uh, offensive coordinator over there, uh, who, who's their new head coach. So, I think Roy City uh, is going to have to grow, grow up a little bit in this district because it's gotten a lot better. Uh, I think they're going to be just on the outside looking in. Uh, Tyler Legacy, who ended up making the playoffs in this district last year, I've got as kind of the odd team out. Well, hit me with your one through seven. Maybe in the course of this uh, pod, podcast, you've decided Longview doesn't deserve to be in the top, in the top seven. So Can't hit me with your one through right seven now, with all North Texas teams. Go. I got number one, your 40 Jackrabbits. Number two, the Rockwall Yellow Jackets. Number three, I'll, I'll take the Lobos at Longview. Uh, four, I'm going to stick with Rockwall Heath, but I reserve the right to change my mind uh, based on uh, as more news comes out. Number five, North Forney. You can flip a coin with those two teams. Uh, number six, uh, Roy City. And number seven, Tyler Legacy.